Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Recently on the radio show, I was able to interview John Bond, former Mississippi State quarterback, who in the early 80s was the starter for four years from 1980 through his senior year in 1983. John had a great career. One thing that's really a high point for him is that he never lost to LSU. And in this interview, we recap some of those games, his memories. And look, it's not to uh, come in here and ignore the reality we're living in and around right now. It's just simply to have a little fun and maybe even for a, a minute, try to put a smile on your face. And so glad that's working. With, with that said, here's another uh, way to put a little smile on your face. Let's relive some glory days with one of our favorites around here for a lot of reasons. John Bond on your radio right now, the original number 13. And I, I don't know, John, are you as big an Andy Griffith fan as I am? Oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> Man, I okay. love that. That was the greatest show, greatest show ever until Seinfeld. Until and Seinfeld? Then, um, <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, you know, you're talking about Don Knotts. My wife is from North Carolina, so Mount Airy is uh -huh. kind of what that is is based around. And then um, talk about Goober. Goober, I played golf with him a couple of times. Did um, you really? Hold and, on a uh, minute. Hold on. Time yeah. out. Time out. You got me. You got me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you played golf with George Lindsay Goober from the Andy yeah. Griffith Show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's uh, – he – he was friends with Sonny Shorter, who was Enos. Yes. And Enos is from Valdosta. Okay, so and so we're so, tying in we're tying in two shows yeah. together here. Enos, the exactly the deputy deputy <laughs> sheriff on Dukes of Hazard. Right. And he's from Valdosta, so he played in some uh when Valdosta State would have like a fundraising golf tournament or whatever. And uh it was when Chris Hatcher was the head coach. Right. He would get people like uh George Lindsay, and you get Enos, and then you get uh, Donna. Um, is it Donna Mills? Um, yes, I think Ellie that's right. May. Uh huh. Donna Mills. Yeah, Ellie May. She would play and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So it was always fun. So those those deals when Chris was was uh, head coach here at Valdosta State, he he had some he had some big timers, man. Well, at least you know back in the day stuff. And yeah, it was always right. fun to hang out with those guys and listen to them. And, you know and, what uh, those guys talk stories. about now, John? You know what? Those people you mentioned, you know what they talk about now? Some of them who are still with us, they What's they, that? they go around saying, "Hey, man, I got to play golf one time with John Bond." Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. Okay, well, look. Since we're on the entertainment nugget here, uh, or on that thread, I, before we jump into some football stuff, real quick. Yeah, I did yeah. notice on Twitter yesterday. You put it out there that you had dug through a box and you found a VHS copy of Caddyshack. Yes. Did you watch it? Uh, no, I haven't yet. I, I don't have to. <laughs> I've got it all memory. It's all right here. Well, I thought you were going to tell me you didn't watch it because you can't find a VCR anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, before I went ahead and found a VCR before I, I did that because I knew if I found all these VHSs, I would be so mad that I couldn't play them. So sure. I went ahead and made sure that I had something before I even started digging through it. And I found Outlaw Josie Wells on VHS. Oh, <laughs> man. That's great. You know, John, uh, that okay, so that's a great one with uh, Clint Eastwood. And yeah. what's, what's neat about that is it, it was different for him because he had made all those spaghetti westerns, the good, the bad, the ugly stuff, right. you know? And you had yeah. Italian film crews, an Italian director, uh, of course, the Italian music, basically, for all those, and they dubbed the voices yeah. in. But that was – Outlaw Josie Wales was kind of his first big, like, American-made hit, really. It was, yep. And, uh, and I didn't look on there. I thought, what was it, about 78 or something? Or Did it come before seven? before Dirty Harry or after? I think it was before. Yeah. yeah, I think it was before Dirty Harry. Yeah. Yeah, so it was probably mid to early 70s, maybe. Okay. I guess. And uh, right. I'll have to look on there and find out. But yeah. that one and, and uh, my other favorite was Jeremiah Johnson. Oh, boy. I'm looking for that one. Yeah, that's, that's a, a one. great one. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Redford. I mean, those guys. Yeah. You got me wanting to go back and watch them. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> great. It is great. great. Okay, and so in the well, box. A, we got plenty of time to do that. We got plenty of time to do that. <laughs> hey, I told man. on you. I told on you, by the way. 
Bef- I said Uh-oh. I said a while ago. It wouldn't was, be the first time, Matt. <laughs> well, I know. Dog <laughs> gone. I've been told on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it was mild. I just simply told people on the air. I said, "Hey, I reached out to John. Said, hey, can you come on the show today?" And he very nicely replied, "Sure. What else have I got to do?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, but all right. So in the box of VHS tapes, you also found right. football footage. Yes. All right, so I want to go back to that. I want to go back to that. And you shared, and everybody listening right now, if you're listening on the radio, if you're listening, watching on Facebook, uh, follow him on Twitter or look at it. It's at John Bond 1313 okay, because John tweeted out just a few clips. It is legend around these parts how uh, John is the only Mississippi State quarterback to ever never lose to LSU. He beat them four years straight, home and away. And some clips from those games, John, you put them on Twitter. So I just thought we'd go back just to take a glance at it to see how special that was. So, yeah. so, so 1980, Jackson, Mississippi, really good football team. That's yeah. the year y'all beat Alabama in that same stadium and put up right. 55 points on LSU, beat them 55-31. What happened in that game? Golly, man, it was, uh, you know, we had played Alabama a couple of weeks before, and we, uh, we, I think that we threw the ball ten times, maybe. It okay. may have been eight, you know, and they had the number one rush defense. Well, even, and before that, we played Miami, who had the number one rush defense in mm-hmm. the country, and uh, put 34 on them, and then had uh, Alabama – who at that time had the number one rush defense, and we threw the ball eight times, you know. But we went, I think I rushed for about 100 and, and uh, um, uh, I, you know, could just kept the ball on the ground the whole time. Mm. So Coach Ballard that week of the LSU game, it, they had such strong run support from those guys. All four of those guys were drafted in like the first or second round, those DBs. And, uh, I mean, they would just come up and light you up. So they're very aggressive on run support. So, you know, Coach Ballard, of course, he, he knew that. So the very first play from scrimmage was going to be a play action, you know, taking a triple, drop back, and, and uh, throw a post. Because we knew that safety, they are going to try and run the alley with that safety and try and uh, get to me and make me pitch, and the cornerback was going to be on the, the dive guy. So, uh, I mean, the pitch guy. So very first play, he has a uh, uh, 60 or 58. I can't remember how. It was about midfield. We got the ball at midfield and, and uh, about midfield and then mm. boom, opening play through a touchdown pass. <laughs> and then it was, and then it was on. I think it was tied up, uh, 24, 24 something at halftime. And then Glenn Young, of course, ran that one back, the uh, opening second half kickoff from about one, about five yards deep. And only, a, and you know, he zigzagged and somebody grabbed his back of his jersey. And so it wasn't just a straight shot. And he, 11 seconds, they clicked off the clock. <laughs> wow. How about <laughs> he could that? Go. He could go. I'm telling and, you. And uh, Marty, Marty caught a couple. And, and uh, we just kind of kept him honest for the run and threw it on him a bunch. Yeah. So 55 31, your freshman year, beat LSU and Jackson. 55 31. And, and so. The context is y'all put up six points the week before in beating number one Alabama. Go back to Jackson right. the very next week and put up fifty five on LSU. Wow! Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I think it was. I think we had an off week, but we had it was that stretch that we had for my four years was Miami, Auburn, Alabama, LSU, and Ole Miss. That's how we ended every season. Every year. Gracious a lot. You don't want to yeah, hear you don't want to hear anything about modern scheduling in Murderer's Row, do you? I mean <laughs> No, I don't. Good. No, grief. I don't, man. It's uh, it was that was uh, that was a mess there now. Uh, okay, so I love it pretty good. So you beat them your freshman year in Jackson. The very next year, eighty one, mm-hmm. sophomore year, you go to Baton Rouge. That was a seventeen to nine win for you. And including right. including a touchdown was that one where you had the touchdown run, they hit you four yards deep in the end zone? <laughs> no, that was the next time we played in okay. Baton Rouge. Okay. Yeah, that guy, good grief. <laughs> and that was uh, a little obvious there. Sure. But they were always bad about it, and I, I expected it. I knew it was coming, and, and uh, every every time we played them, it was going to be late hits, and it was going to be you know, blindside, from behind, or wherever. They All right, so some, they were going to lay some leather on you. So 17-9 to 9 in Baton Rouge your sophomore year, 1981. What was that like? What was that, What happened in that game? That was well, you know, that was my my first time to play, you know, there in Baton Rouge, and man, 
you we pull in on Friday, and it was nuts already. Mm-hmm. And you know we're just going to do the walkthrough, and uh, um, they you know you're supposed to kind of clear out the stadium, you know, so we can do run plays and all that. Well, they had a DJ in there playing, and <laughs> boy, they were getting on me, and you know all the mic, all the speakers, and all that. And we were we were putting four wides out and throwing. <laughs> Coach Clark, he didn't show them anything. We were splitting everybody out, and, and uh, but man, we were leaving. They were sitting there waiting on us to get on the bus, and they were, you know, just dog cussing us and throwing beer cans at us. And I mean, you, we couldn't get out of there fast enough. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was. My eyes were pretty big the next night to see it full and loud. And, but if you, and that was probably the close. Well, but the Starville game was a little bit closer. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, there was. It was still the usual, the late hits and all that kind of stuff. But um, mm-hmm. uh, it was it was a tighter game. It wasn't wasn't as clean as that first one. Sure, uh, John Bond on your radio right now. So that was your sophomore year. They uh, ha- right. they haze you guys on what's supposed to be the walkthrough. And oh then, golly, and, it was unbelievable. And then you win the game on Saturday. You beat them seventeen to nine. Um, right. H- how was your safety exiting the stadium after? Beating them for you know the second year straight. Yeah, they, that's the thing. That's the good thing about if you're in Baton Rouge and you win, it's pretty empty mm-hmm. when, when you. Uh, <laughs> there's not much uh, taunting afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. that was easy to walk outside. But that was when they uh, before they put that tarp where we walked out, mm-hmm. and they had uh, and and all the guys they were just deathly afraid of that tiger, of Mike. <laughs> Yeah. They were scared to death, and they were, you know, they were pulling him around in that cage and all that. Well, Coach Ballard, you know, his uh, his pregame speech was basically, "Fellas, keep your helmet on at all times because <laughs> 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 they're going to chunk whiskey bottles and everything else at you on the sidelines." And sure enough, they were they bounce out there on, to the hash mark, and the ref would just pick it up and toss it back in the side. <laughs> so they, they, it's I like it was normal. Was coming through. <laughs> yeah, they knew it was coming through. And uh but yeah, we busted open those doors and there's Mike right there in that tiger in that cage and then everything just kinda of stopped. We ran into the everybody, you know, just ran into each other's back <laughs> at that point and slid sideways down the wall and then and then you get out there to what is now the tunnel. There was no tunnel at that time. Uh I never forget uh Kent Kent grabbed me, Kent Hole and he, he said, no, it was Bill Bell. Bill Bell grabbed me and stopped me. He said, Whoa, 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 don't go out yet. What he said? Because they're going, they go, they pee in their cups and then throw it on you when you go, when you walk out. So we got to run. <laughs> <laughs> you got to run at once. You got to be kidding me. Hey, look, yeah, you better all- <laughs> my first trip to Baton Rouge for a game, the bus pulled up to the stadium pregame for us to unload and go in the locker room, get dressed, you know, and they wouldn't let us off yeah. the bus. We're just waiting and waiting, and I think I actually spoke up and just said to one of the coaches, "Hey, what's the deal? What are we waiting on?" And he said, "Ah, we got to wait. There's fans up on the top row of the stadium peeing on our buses. We got to wait till they're finished." <laughs> yeah, and then we got to go on in. That's a true story. So they, so yeah, so they turned around. They they just went. We're gonna get them before they get in, not when they're coming out of the tunnel. Mm-hmm, yeah, you know, we're gonna pee on you either way. We're gonna get you either way. <laughs> in the Farm Bureau studio. And John Bond hanging on with us on the Divinity Equipment phone, kind enough to stick around for some more radio. John, I was thinking uh, before we came back from the break, I ought to just like do this every, when, every time we go to commercial. Say, hey, John, you got some time? Stick around and just see how long I can get you to stay with me today. Like maybe you can do the whole show. <laughs> It'll be a long time these days. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Say, Man, would you get off? <laughs> I hear you. All right, so and I've got a couple of questions from listeners. I'm going to go fast here because we we covered pretty yeah. thoroughly. You win in Jackson over LSU your freshman year in '80, put up 55 points. Go to Baton Rouge as a sophomore, win 17 to nine. Now you're two and zero against the Tigers, and then your junior year, 1982, back to Starkville, which was the only time you ever got to play them in Starkville. That was a 27-24 win. That's right. That's right. Yep, and they were uh, they had just beaten Alabama, um, I believe, the week before. Wow! And uh, they were on a pretty good run. I think they were ranked uh, fourth or fifth or something like that. So they they had a pretty good ball club, man. But they always do. You know, they've always got athletes over there. So so we knew that one was going to be a tough one too. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, just the same as all the others. 
we knew they were going to be ready to play, and they were. And I think, uh, I think Allen was Allen Richard. I think Allen Richard was still a quarterback, and then okay. Hodgson came later, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, it was a good one. Mm-hmm. 27, it was a good one. I think it was ABC. Yeah, ABC did it, I think. Okay. Or ABC or somebody was there, and so they had to bring in the light. Oh, you know, really? And, uh, yeah, the portable light. Um, uh, for because I think it was a three o'clock kickoff or something, and uh-huh. and uh, and so it was going to get dark and got cold a little bit later too. So yes, yeah, what I'm looking was, at uh, now, I'm noticing all those games were late in the year. Like you said, you'd finish like you play in LSU every November, um, right? And the first time they played a September game in Baton Rouge in like a long time was in 1992. Like they moved it up to the early part of the year, but okay. And so I want to go back. So now that's three in a row. You've won right. three in a row against LSU, freshman, sophomore, junior, and your senior year. Here you go rolling into Baton Rouge, nineteen eighty three. You've beaten them three in a row. Yep. They're writing about it in the paper, all this kind of stuff. They know you're coming to town, and you put up forty five points in Baton Rouge and run them out of their own stadium. What what happened in that game? Yeah. Well, uh, it, it I could feel it, and I, I remember it like it was yesterday. We're out there pulling and warming up and loo- loosening up, and I tell Coach Mullins, who was my quarterback coach at the time, I said, Coach, we're going to light them up tonight. We, I can just feel it. I can, You know how you feel sometimes mm-hmm. when you go and you know it's coming? I said, oh, man, I'm on. I'm throwing the ball that's just coming off Chris, and, boy, and Danny's catching and everything. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I just knew it was going to be a good night. You know, I said, mm-hmm. if we can just slow them down once or twice, I believe we can light them up. And uh ended up doing that. And that first uh, uh, that first touchdown, I think I ran four on them. And that first one um, was a quarterback sneak. And I decided when I broke the huddle, I said, everybody's going to be trying to tunnel and they're going to be getting down to the ground. I'm going to dive mm-hmm. from under center. I'm going to dive. <laughs> I took one step back and dove. And then Jack, and I, I just remember this now because I just found that tape, but uh, Jack, he goes, and by the quarterback, he dives into the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Which was unusual to see. About you didn't see it a well, whole yeah, lot back then. Yeah. Uh-uh, I just figured everybody's going low. I'm going to go high. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Rodney Dangerfield and Caddyshack. They're all selling. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Sell, sell, sell. Who knew there was a, f- you know, a football correlation in Caddyshack? But, um, and then also I saw, okay, so that was an 83 game. Your senior year, 45-26 right. in Baton Rouge, and that was four in a row. And that was the one where you had a touchdown run, and and literally you crossed the goal line and were four to five yards deep in the end zone, and a guy just plows into you for LSU. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I did just barely catch him out of the corner of my eye, and I'm glad I did because I kind of you know absorbed some of the blow and you know, he knocked me on through the back of the end zone. And, yeah. uh, but that's the way it was every year with those guys, man. Uh, but if you notice that guy that was laying down, that wasn't even the guy that hit. Mm-hmm. What happened? That guy that hit me spun and clipped his own his buddy right there in the knee, and I think he tore his knee up pretty oh, good. Oh no, is that right? So you know that, that is that's why you don't do stuff like that. That's right, turnabout. And you know uh, yeah. you're right. That's why I, now that I remember the highlight, you score the touchdown. You're almost into your celebration. The guy plows into you way late. And it literally catapulted you out of the back of the end zone. Like that's how hard he hit you. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, they were. Uh, they loved. They loved playing and hitting. They didn't break down too much to tackle. <laughs> well, they couldn't get a shot at you during the play. We just hit you afterwards. We got to hit you. There you go. What it is. Yeah. Yeah, good philosophy. I guess so. Uh, hey, a couple well, I things. Think when you don't call the penalty. Oh, I know. That's the thing about it. I mean, no flag. You know, geez yeah. Louise, but it is Baton Rouge at night. You know, they look exactly the players weren't the only ones who feared for their life, apparently. Uh, okay, so <laughs> Ghost Pepper on the uh text line, the country please and sausage text line says, Matt, get John to talk about Jerry Clower. He's under the impression that Jerry Clower went to a lot of your practices back then, John. Is that right? He, he did, he did. He uh met him first. The first game I started was in Nashville. Um, and, and that's the first time I met him. And then he would come back occasionally would see him at practice, like, especially during the spring and stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he'd be around and I, I, I think I told Bo the story, but he, uh, um, 
when I met him, he looked at me and said, partner, you remind me of a rock and roll band. I said, really, Mr. Clower, which one? And he said, blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's a pretty, I'm going to tell you what now, that's a pretty salty uh, Jerry Clower impression you got there, John. Yeah. You, you might need yeah, to get he, you a... Luckily, Maroon. he and Emory Ballard were pretty... Luckily, he and Emory Ballard were pretty close. They were pretty close. I was going to say, you might need to get you a full burgundy suit with a ruffled shirt and, like... Oh, uh, wasn't he great? He was something God, else, man. Wasn't. Hey, he was a showman. Neil Price brings it up to me. Uh, you know Neil, our play-by-play announcer now, yeah. and, and he's a huge Jerry Clower fan. He sent me a clip. It's on YouTube of Jerry Clower was a guest on the Orlando Wilson Fishing Show, and they went brim fishing. Oh. They went brim fishing at Lake Okeechobee, and they're out in the middle of the lake because it ain't but like eight feet deep out in the middle of the lake. Right. And and there was this hilarious moment where Jerry Clower looks at Orlando Wilson and says, Orlando, you know I love you, and I love your family. He said, but we're going to have to get over there next to the bank (laughs) and get us a cricket if we're going to catch a brim. He said, we're out here in the middle of this lake. <laughs> so, he, so Jerry Clower was going to tell Orlando Wilson how to catch fish. You know what I mean? That's what he was doing. So you need to look that one up. I will. I sure will. He was hilarious. All right. My mama absolutely loved him. I grew up with him and all that. So it, yeah. it was good. Good yeah. meeting him. You know, I never did get to meet him. Uh, but I did meet his brother, Sonny, who, yeah, uh, Jerry, you know, Jerry passed, I think, in 98. Um, and so right. he was around. I was uh, obviously aware of him. But in my first few years of college, really, I guess my whole college career, late 90s, his brother, Sonny, tailgated and had an RV. And, and he tailgated right next to the Sluters. Remember Kevin Sluter? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And his sure. folks would come up oh, from wow. Pensacola. Yeah. And so I got to meet Sonny. And he he passed away a few years later, maybe late nineties, early two thousand, something like that. But uh, wow, that's, that's good stuff. Wow. Well, hey, yeah, John, it uh, it, it's yeah. interesting to talk to you. Kind of look back. There are several moments, but obviously the Alabama game, but the four straight wins over LSU. You had those clips on Twitter last night. I just wanted to talk to you about it. And I think when I looked at it, I didn't realize it, but um, the year after you graduated, the eighty four season, State beat them again. By two points yeah. there, and I, I didn't. I'm not even right. aware of that game or who played for that matter. Yeah, that was uh, Don Smith. Yeah, okay. Don Smith was highly recruited quarterback out of Hamilton, Mississippi, and and was an unbelievable player. I mean, he uh, great athlete. Um, uh, I told Emory, I said, "Look, coach, you know I can catch the football. You know, so if you need me to go out and be a receiver, I can do that. <laughs> 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 you know, we put this guy in the center, and we can go." Mm-hmm. And, uh, but anyway, we, uh, he, he was a great quarterback and, uh, a great athlete. I think there's some of his stuff on, on YouTube. Uh, I think they played up in Knoxville and, yeah. uh, they beat Tennessee up there. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah that's was, right. uh, pretty good. Had a pretty good little run with those guys. Yep. Hey, thank goodness for YouTube too, right? Yeah, no doubt. I'll tell you. Um, we can go back no and doubt. watch those things. And for old boxes in the closet with VHS tapes. And a random yep. VCR sitting around the house. Thankful for those things these days. <laughs> <laughs> no question. No question. Yeah. Uh, John, I appreciate you, man. Listen, it's always good to talk to you. Man, shoot, yeah. Always good talking to you, Matt. I appreciate you. Yep. All right. Talk to you soon. You, you stay safe. Yeah, you too, man. Hang in there. We'll stay in touch. All right, buddy. All right. All right. See you. All right, bye. Bye-bye.